In this video, we're going to do a probably introductory video example problem on particle kinematics if you're taking a course in engineering dynamics. And this 1D particle motion, which just means that you have a particle or a car or something that's moving left and right. It's just moving back and forth in one dimension. It could be left, right, up, down, whatever it is. It's just moving back and forth one way. And and right here, in this case, in a lot of problems, the position of a particle is given by some sort of mathematical relationship, in this case, a polynomial in units of meters and where the t is in seconds. So what they're telling you is that this this pro this given relationship will output the units of, of meters. And what we'd like to find in this problem is the total distance traveled in 10 seconds. First, that's going to involve determining the velocity as a function of time and finding when the particle stops or comes to rest or when the velocity equals zero. And that's going to tell us when the particle changes direction. And so what we want to find is when does the particle change direction? The next thing that we're going to want to do is identify the, the, the important points and determine the relative distances between each of those points and add them up. And that will be the total distance traveled. And, and really, the point of this problem is to illustrate the use of the critical point in calculus to, to understand what's happening to an actual particle as it moves back and forth or up and down in one direction only. So let's go ahead and determine the velocity as a function of time. So I, I want to determine the velocity of function of time. Here's my position as a function of time. And all you got to do is remember is that the velocity is the first time derivative of position. So ds dt. And here, this will just be 3t squared minus 30t plus 50. And this is supposed to output units of meters per second. The next thing we're going to want to do is determine the critical points or the times when the velocity is equal to zero, because that tells us when the particle changes direction. And that just simply involves setting the velocity equal to zero and solving for time. So here's the quadratic formula. Now let's just plug and chug the variables that are the values that we need here. And when I go through the calculations, the, the roots of this 7.887 seconds and 2.113 seconds. Now the next thing for us to do is determine which times are important and figure out the position of the particle at those times so that we can calculate the difference or the distance traveled within each of those time periods. So those important times are when the particle or where is the particle at t equals zero when it starts and obviously the points where it changes direction. So this 2.113 seconds and the, the 7.887 seconds. And then where's a particle when it when we want to find out where it ends, if you will, and the problem it says from zero to 10 seconds. So at 10 seconds, where is this particle? And now all it takes is a straight up plug and chug. At t equals zero, you get negative 25 meters. At 2.113 seconds, it's going to be at 23.113 meters. At 7.887, it's going to be at negative 73.113 meters. And at t equals 10 seconds, it's going to be negative 25 meters. So the thing I like to do in these problems is make sure I visualize the motion of the particle. One, you know, I'm going to just show you real fast how I, I use a number line and, and look at the position. That way, I, it's easy for me to see what the distances are. So here's what my drawing looks like. At t equals zero, I'm at negative 25 meters. And then I, at t equals 2.113 seconds, I'm at 23.113 meters. Then I'm moving back to the left here, and it's at negative 73 meters at 7.89 seconds, if you will. And then at 10 seconds, I'm back at negative 25 meters here. And my total distance traveled is going to be the sum of this distance plus this distance plus this distance. And if I work that out real quickly, it'll look like this. So this is what that total distance formula would look like here formally, where this is S0, this is S1, this is S2, and this is S3. And if you just straight up plug and chug, you'll get an S total. And here's what it looks like with the numbers filled in. And if you add all this up the, with the absolute values and everything in it and do it correctly, this will come out to 192.45 meters. And hopefully I'm right. And that would be the total distance traveled of this particle from 0 to 10 seconds. All right, hopefully that was enjoyable. See ya.